All right, hello, men and women. Uh, we are going to be doing a part two here on Gnostic Artist. Part two is going to uh, encapsulate uh, what we began talking about, X marks the spot. And I'm going to tell you why um, I waited till the very end, right before the eclipse on um, that's going to happen tomorrow. And because there's a lot of good videos out there that uh, explain, you know, the origin of, you know, eclipses and why they happen and um, what they mean, all the cities it's going to cover. Well, today we're going to talk about a topic that has been buzzing uh, for at least a month or two. And I've put off making the connection. Uh, we did a part one with Anne Marie and um, it was uh, just the tip of the iceberg uh, talking about what the X is um, that we're, we're seeing in the news a lot today. And the bottom line is they want you to be looking for this X because they don't want you looking at some of the other stuff. And um, so I wanna to touch on the true nature of what the X is and not some of the some of the stuff they want you to see. Um, so I'm not, I'm gonna try to go through this rather quickly because I don't want to make this video longer than it has to be. But um the bottom line is the thing you have to be aware of is that they they're they're doing a wag the dog on us. Uh, they want us to look at something and it's because they want to distract you into not looking at something else. The bottom line, again, is deception, lie, whatever you want to call it, is the modus operandi. All right, so let's uh, let's get going on this. I'm going to shrink my screen down, and then I'm going to start sharing this. So. All right, so we did a part one with the, um, when all three of us were on, and this is going to be the continuation part. Um, really mean anything. So let me go ahead and get uh, the presentation part started. And... I'll shrink my screen down. And if you recall, we uh, we named this X marks a spot. This is going to be part two. And um, here we go. So if you recall, you know, I said if we lived on a flat plane, we might be in this part right here. And then there's a lot of other parts where we could be at. We're going to go down to uh, part two. We're going to start it here on, on this screen right here. So again, we just to recap, we, uh, we talked about how tau uh, the is, the, is like the Z letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It, and it started off looking like the T, and then now it looks like an X. Or actually, in the Middle Ages, it started to look like an X, but the modern time, now it looks kind of like the, this this here, um, and it kind of resembles like R N almost, but doesn't have anything to do with our our letter. So let's let's go forward. So what we're really doing is we're at a crossroads. A lot of things are happening, um, things that um, like ec economically. We're seeing inflation just deteriorate the value of our, our currency, current, uh, which is it's fiat, it's really not worth anything. It's just um, a value that we all perceive and believe to be value. And uh, in reality, we it's time to make a decision. It's, it's that point where we get to that cross uh, or the intersection of the two arrows and we, and we realize it's time to put up or shut up. 
And it's really not for us, but it's for the elites who think that they're in control. So here's the challenge. It's time to identify that crossroad in our daily lives. So there's a time in on this earthly life where we find ourselves at that location where we either were placed here or we put ourselves here. And it's, you know, what we call go time. Either we're going to spread those wings and we're going to soar or fatally we're going to realize that we're through. We're going to crash. We're going to crash and burn. Well, but in reality, guess whose time has really arrived? Let me just change the view on this. That's better. All right. Well, it no, it's not Larry David. I don't know if you guys follow uh, Larry David. He's the creator of, of one of the creators of Seinfeld, and you know he's uh, he's been in the news recently because it's his show that's been uh, you know I think it's 12th season right now. It's coming to an end. Ah, he's at his crossroads. Um, the show's called Curb Your Enthusiasm. It's you know it's a, it's a satiric, it's a comedic uh, show, uh, and it it shows his struggles as a Jewish man uh, and how he in turn gets himself in all kinds of trouble. And even the Jewish people and the Jewish community oftentimes are berating him. Uh, you think that he's putting himself into these predicaments and then somehow uh, everyone around him just is so mad at him. So he creates these problems and in reality, um, he kind of represents the non-Jew, um, even though he pretends to be kind of Jewish. He doesn't have any kind of knowing about what Judaism is all about. And then the people who do know malign him. So what does this mean? Um, the entire world is made up in, um, is up in arms, actually. Uh, and let's look at who. Who is the one that's stirring this pot? Benjamin Netanyahu, called Bibi, um, and his uh, Israel, his Israeli warmongering state, we know right now, is killing men, women, and children at alarming rate, uh, at a rate probably not seen since the German chancellor. Uh, again, this is the narrative we're told. Uh, during World War II. And um, so we see Larry David in this episode of you know, this final season. He is called a Shanda for the Goyim by a, a rabbi, and the rabbi's name is Edelman. And, and this the narrative here is, you know, Larry did something uh, to someone, and so they shame him by putting his name in a stone and erecting it in front of the, the temple. And they call him a Shanda, Shanda for the Goy. Let's take a look at these two words. Um, again, this is all satire. You know, this guy is, is painted as a leftist, um, but I think, you know, he's kind of making fun of the left. So what, this is what they do. They make fun of themselves and they make fun of the, the people who are in the right. And so you kind of are kind of left off balance. So in the previous slide, uh, we said that the uh, the rabbi called him a shanda for the goyim, and this is a tell because who's really speaking? Um, uh, the The bottom line is that the Jewish population is not the the people who are really the norm. Okay. We're talking more about the elite. We don't want to focus on being anti-Semitic or being labeled as uh, not liking a certain sect of people. I think what we have to focus on this video is identifying who the problem people are. And the problem is the Zionists. The Zionists uh, want to create Israel, okay? Uh, and not for the reason that they tell us. Because it's an Israeli state lover, 
Okay, that's all they care about. They care about creating a state, nothing else. Not about people, not about lives. They just want to establish a legality of a land that's owned and controlled. So let's look at the word Shanda. Shanda is a Yiddish word, and it means something that is scandalously shameful. Remember, Yiddish, shame. This is not Hebrew. This is a derivation of languages in like a German sense. And it's kind of like a code language. Or it's a geographic language. It's not Hebrew. Uh, but goyim is a Hebrew word. Now, what does it mean? It's a reference to a Gentile, a non-Jew. The singular would be goy. But the, the connotation is someone who's not Jewish. Kind of kind of satire right there because these people aren't Jewish except by taking on the religion. We're going to talk about why they took the religion on later. And then we're going to identify who they really are. So I'm going to say no thanks, Oxford. Let's not beat around the bush. It's a derogatory term. Uh, it's not just um, a word for non uh non-Jew. It's it's really a put down. Um, let's see. So it's a derogatory term, a uh, Yiddish term, uh, Ashkenazi term, to describe non-Jews more correctly, more correctly, I think, non-Eastern European Jews that converted uh, that have nothing to do with uh, the line of the Hebrews, but yet it acts more like a human shield uh, like for war tactics. All right, let's look at where we see this goyim in uh, everyday life. If you go into 7-Eleven, they have a private label product, uh, product a line of products. And uh, this, uh, this ranges from peanuts, popcorn, cheddar snacks, uh, ice cream, even dark chocolate. It's a Dallas based uh, product, uh, a product line that's since 2015. And, uh, you know, that's that's pretty much the line. Uh, you can't think of healthy foods and 7-Eleven. Uh, and so you're going to probably get a lot of toxicity from these types of foods. But why connect 7-Eleven to Goyim and this uh, derogatory term? Well, September 11th means sept, because sept is seven. Or is it supposed to mean September 11th, the ninth month? Is it the seventh or is it the ninth? Well, this animated series called Inside Job pretty much identifies that the 7-11 and the 9-11 are one and the same. You can pick which one is, is correct, can you? I mean... Is it everyday life or is it history? What are you going to do? Remember, the calendar had originally, and this is how they confound you. Originally, the 10-month calendar ended up at the end of, um, at the, oh, I can't remember the time frame, but uh, the 10-month the calendar was the original calendar. Two months, uh, February, uh, January and February were added at the end and then conveniently moved to the front. Um, so you can see that if March 1st was the first month, April was second, May was third, June would be fourth, July, August, and so forth, through eight, uh, sept, sept, which is the seventh month, was September, 8th, October, 9th, November, 10th, December. I mean, logically, that's what those words stand for. And then January, February at the end, and because of the uh, the 11 has a 1 in it and the 12 has a 2 in it. They said, okay, let's move those to the front and we will be able to kind of throw off the population and, of course, making it so that you don't know what the first day of the year is. Then what we started seeing in the next few weeks is um, political people like this lady from Sweden just were getting on uh, these platforms and just being silent. And they're telling us that, you know, the stuff that's happening to the Palestinians is just outrageous. Um, 
and this, you know, I got to give this lady credit for, you know, her silence is speaking volumes. The Gaza, the stuff that's happening in Gaza is just, is just terrible. What happens next? You start seeing even rabbis who are ethical. Uh, they're talking about the, um, um, how the Palestinians are being treated and, and how the, the landscape is more and more agitated. And so this gentleman here says, yeah, uh, I'm a rabbi, Rabbi David, and today outside of a synagogue, they're selling properties that are built on stolen Palestinian land. And this is happening in his home in Canada. And this is also happening here in the United States. In New Jersey, This these men are coming up and protesting the fact that the lands on the West Bank are being occupied. And uh, because of the occupation, they're um, trying to go and make these houses sold in New Jersey uh, that are located in, uh, in um, the Palestinian region. How can these sell off property that they don't even own? And then in the final screen uh, on the far right, uh, this man is saying, hey, look, why are we even looking at this? That the Messiah hasn't even returned, and we want to create this notion of an Israeli state. What is the deal? All right, so let's get to the X. Now, a lot of people have already covered this, and I'm not going to rehash it. But the X that's happening, um, that's going to culminate tomorrow, is no different than the X that happened uh, in the, the years uh, 1999 to 2006. Uh, those also were the same uh, Soros uh, angles, 145 and Soros. Uh, 139, same ones that are happening now. As you can see from this list, we have several Nineveh and uh, Rapture cities and Jonah cities, and, and a lot of other people have already covered this. So I'm not going to go over this. It's very easy to find. But uh, this just pause the video, and you can look at these six um, six bullet points, mathematical probability of this stuff happening. It's It's just a cycle. This is nothing more than a clock that uh, has um, moved and it is just going to do its cycle. So we see the, the total number of towns that are, have these names, uh, seven towns that are named Nineveh, um, the eclipse paths, uh, total solar eclipse that's going to happen in, uh, in April, on April, tomorrow, April 8th, is going to culminate the X. Um, let's see what else. Other six towns outside the path that have the name Nineveh. There's a whole list of stuff that you can find a lot of other videos. I'm not going to cover all that. I'm going to tell you right now, the reason why these cities all cover this path, the people in control are very knowledgeable of how to get information. And the way you do it is you hire astrologists, and they tell you when these paths happen. You knew this path was going to happen seven years ago. Why wouldn't you have known that this path was going to happen 2,000 years ago? And if you know that path's going to happen, aren't you going to be the one who pushes for a city to be called that because you know it's going to come in the path? If you know the story of Nineveh and what Jonah did and didn't do, and how the city that um, of Nineveh was going to be destroyed, and then somehow miraculously it wasn't. You can figure out that it's just a script. All right, let's go back to the people who stole our modern day society and are trying to um, hide the treasure, and it's where the X is marked. The, the treasure is knowledge. Okay, it's not some pot of gold. But it is a but it is a way. It's way more than just an X. It's like we said. It's a crossroads. The crossroads marked. The language is weaponized. You know, it used to look like this, right here, 
and now it looks like this. I mean, you it's unrecognizable. You have to be a scholar to be able to know what to look for. And then the charade, the puppets are being played. You have the Zionists who are killing their own people. You know, they are, or they're herding their people like cattle. And they're making it look like the rest of the world is, is what's doing it. In reality, the Zionists want you to hate the Jewish people. And you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to hate anyone. No color, no creed, no nothing. What you got to do, though, is you have to be aware of who the enemy is. And what are they hiding behind? Remember, I said earlier that they're hiding behind faith like a human shield. And then, of course, finally, the X everyone has been waiting for. All right. Is the X a lie or a deception hidden in a misunderstanding of three days of darkness? Well, that's exactly what it is. You think of, you know, biblically, you hear the term three days of darkness, and you think to yourself, oh my gosh, there's going to be darkness for three entire days? Okay, remember, it's hyperbole. It is a story that you're told that really just represents something else. You're not going to have a, a, a full day of just the, sh the sun being turned off like a light. You're not going to have that. It's not going to be like this. Is not. What's going to happen is you're going to have you're going to experiencing be experiencing some kind of uh, hovering of the sun for a short amount of time, just like an eclipse. It's going to last what uh, a few minutes, a couple of hours at most uh, for the entirety. So here we go. We see that eight twenty one seventeen. We had the eclipse go across the, from the west to the east, and now we. Um, and then, of course, the, what about the eclipse that no one talks about? No one talks about the eclipse of 12-14-2020. <laughs> Do we know? Uh, and Archaics did a great job of explaining the importance of all three eclipses, but the one that um, created the whole shutdown was the one from 2020. And what happened on 2020, we remember? Do you remember? Yeah, that thing with the arm juice being released. I'll cover that a little bit. And of course, to, tomorrow, we're going to see 4824, where all the Nineveh cities and um, all the biblical cities are going to get crossed. Well, most will say, well, who cares about the eclipse in the South, in South America? Well, you just have to recall on that day of the concentrated lockdown. A company called Pfizer was prominent that day. Um, our outdated electoral college, excuse me, our, our electoral college system named Bread, uh, Brain Dead Joe as the president and took uh, Mr. T out uh, out of office probably four years earlier before he could accomplish what his whole goal was. Well, the Pfizer shot made was made available to the masses as a pharmacia sacrifice to what I call, and a lot, John Coleman calls, the Committee of 300's self-proclaimed gods of Olympus. And these are the elites. L leads. So we're seeing so many that uh, took the double bite, uh, and and those people are, th the reason they took it is because they either needed to keep their job or register to a school. And what are we seeing? We're seeing a lot of cancer, infertility, lung failure, blood clots, heart attacks, all that has spiked just because of what happened as the indicating day on that 2020 solar eclipse path from South America. You know, it covered, uh, went over Chile and Argentina. It went from the Pacific Ocean into the Atlantic Ocean. All right. We also know that Pfizer's facility is in Chesterfield, Missouri. But there's also another location, uh, another Chesterfield, 
uh, that is pretty famous in our past um, that has nothing to do with the Pfizer plant, but the name is, you know, energetically, we have to look at names and how important they are. So we know that Chesterfield County, Virginia is known for another product that has uh, had a mass effect on people's health. Uh, it was a product uh, owned by the Drummond Company and later was sold to Leggett and Myers. A lot of these names have a certain flavor to them. Uh, so that Leggett and Myers Company bought Chesterfield cigarettes in 1911. And then later it was bought by Philip Morris. Again, look at these Myers and Forrest, Morris names. You know who has these names. So who were the ones that kind of propagated the product to be so popular? Notables are Robert Oppenheimer. He created the atom slash really just an electric atom bomb. Uh, Rod Serling you know, of Twilight Zone fame. You know, that's what kind of like bends reality into a, like a pretzel. It's kind of where we're at. Our reality is being bent. And then Lucille Ball. Beautiful, rosany redhead. That's always getting into trouble. Kind of like Larry David, right? But whose name symbolically is Lucifer. So others include our actor president, Ronnie Reagan, and Bob the Handler, I'm going to emphasize that, Hope. One theory is that the Russian skirmish with uh, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine was nothing more than Putin's attempt to destroy labs that were really U.S.-funded chemical weapons plants. Uh, they were cooking up um, virology, if you want to call it that, and the double-pronged arm juice. Um, this is nothing more than biological pharmacia to test on who the bottom feeders, and you know who they are. Again, here's the red and blue dichotomy. This is what they wanted you to... Oh, which one am I going to have today? And of course, then they offer you this fake ultralight. So there's Lucy, Rod Serling, and the handler, Chesterfield. All right. Crown V is injected into the TV programming once again. Crown with the crown right here. Nice. In Larry David's Curb Your Enthusiasm, the final season, which is right now, the main thrust of episode nine, ha, here we go again, nine, which is upside down six, and is pretty much synonymous with hold 19. And it jumps from person to person. He gets, he gets COVID, and he infects people left and right, supposedly. And he's constantly taking a test every day to see if he's still contagious. Uh, but yet he's not ill. He's just walking around. He might have a little temperature. And yet he's fine. But who is he accused of giving the virus to? And, and, and then he can't go on his musical tour. Larry is accused of giving fellow Shemite, Bruce Springsteen, and I spelled it the way it probably should be spelled. Bruce Springsteen? Terrible actor, by the way. It's a total mockery as they depict everyone in the near vicinity as a casualty. Everyone that could get it does get it. The Zion, the Zion and the C91 connection is alive and well once again. It even looks like he's telling us about the nature of a domed earth. Look at the look at the the sun is coming over his chrome dome. Again, truth is in comedy. It's not in the news. It's in your cartoons. It's in your animes. It's in your comic books. 
It's not in the news. All right, Comet. Do you remember Comet when it used to be a cleanser? It's not a cleanser anymore. This Comet is poison. The BS just won't let up. Even with the Devil's Comet, a.k.a. Ponds Brooks. They just continue to amaze me as they name this thing Ponds. Ponds like a pond. Sounds like pond. And Brook, a small river. Water-related, right? So water is the key. It's an ice comet. Oh, of course. Out in space, water turns into ice. And as it flows through space, the horns uh, are what call it the Devil's Comet. So wouldn't it eventually erupt away all of the water? It says that the reason it's it creates the horns is because of the it's constantly erupting and leaving off, giving off particles and steam. If this thing is cycling every seventy-one years, don't you think eventually it would lose? its mass, and then stop coming by. Uh, it's just, it's just crazy. Ponds, brooks, devil's comet. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just remember that the logo always had the point going down, so this always looked like the Baphomet, right? All right, the Jerusalem Report. It's a it's a published magazine, and it starts off one article as a Jew, a Greek Jew, two Turkish-born Germans, a Lebanese, Armenian, and an Israeli walk into a bar. What a joke, huh? They're telling you it's a joke. It's in your face. It's not hiding. It's in your face. Moderna was created by this German, I'm sorry, by this Greek Jew. Uh, Borlas, right? And when they emphasize this article, the highlights are about a hundred year period where um, the challenged Jews are creating the uh, the document that is known as the Communist Manifesto. Hello, do you see that? The Jewish people created communism, Bolshevik. Again, it's not the Jews, really. It's the Ashkenazis, the ones that adopted Judaism, rather than have any kind of uh, lineage connection. It's just, again, it's a human shield. So... <clears throat> They said that from 1820 to 1924, an unending flow of Jews made their way to America and Europe, making this uh, a great time to prepare for this state that they were going to create in that 100-year period between 1848 and 1947, the birth pangs. Can you say problem, reaction, solution? You know, if I were a Zionist and I wanted to create a state and I wanted to f f uh, funnel them in, I would create a cattle call, something that would drive them out of one part of the world. And lo and behold, the reaction would be the cry of, where should we go? And then, oh, we've already concocted the solution. We're going to create a state. And uh, the British colonials will help uh, in 1948. And that's exactly what happens. Problem, reaction, solution. So who runs Israel? Or better, better, better stated, Zion. First, you need to define both terms. Um, Israel, we know, son of Abraham, appointed by Yah Yahweh, the Yahweh character. Call. It was done when Jacob outlasted. Melchizedek, a Christophany, right? Outlasted, I find that to be a very, very um, poignant word, right? Um, outlast, two men wrestling, outlast. And while wrestling at night, mm -hmm, what does that symbolize? 
All right, so let's look at the word Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Well, Sedek is the word for God. So they were saying that Jacob is now Israel because he was able to hold his own with God. I find that, again, comedy. Israel means to contend with. Um, or the classic breakdown is Isis, Ra, and El. Yeah, I'll take that one. Now look at the word Zion. Land in which God followers, God's followers can live and serve him. City of holiness or refuge. The Greek word for Zion means grave. Hmm. I wonder which one I like better. So a Zionist should be the one that wants to go, wants to go there in order to seek refuge and serve God. Is that what you see happening? I don't see any type of religious uh, act going on in this region of the world. My search shows that the Ashkenazi Eastern European Khazar people are just Turkic people. They were the Turkic people. And I associate them with more like the Russia and the Ukraine. This is because they adopted Judaism as a means of shielding themselves from persecution while building a trading empire like silk, other things between Russia and China. Today, many revisionists will just say, oh, no, 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 the DNA shows the Ashkenazis are related to the Jews of the Eastern, uh, that lived in Eastern Europe. But that seemed to be um, concocted. It's, it's, it's a made-up made up story. To bridge the chasm that separates the genetic difference between the two people. I mean, the genetic difference, it's night and day, okay? People say you can't tell the difference. Oh, come on. You can totally tell the difference. The genetic features, the skin color, the height, all different. So leaving blood out of it, one can come to conclude that, that they only want to purge Zion of the OG Hebrew line. That is the main thrust. All right. Now, let's, I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit. A rabbi, his name is Rebbe. You got Rebbe? This man met with Netanyahu in the 90s prior to him becoming the uh, prime minister. And he promised that Netanyahu would be the prime minister. And, it, and that's exactly what happened. Later, the rabbi asked in an encounter with him, hey, now you're a rabbi. I mean, now that you're the prime minister, why haven't you gotten that third temple uh, started yet? You know, hasten it. And uh, Netanyahu replied, it's all, it's all started. It's all begun. Well, you know, that was 22 years later. So sometime in 2022, um, Netanyahu was now reinstated as the prime minister after being removed and then reinstated. He finally found the missing piece to the puzzle and how he was going to get the temple built and, and begun. I know you're saying, Harry, what does the X and the and the Rebbe uh, and the U.S. born Netanyahu all have to do with anything? Well, it's two words. Red heifer. <clears throat> in order to, uh, to burn, to, excuse, in order to build on this uh, sacred land, you need to, to be purified. Not only the people have to be purified, but the land and even the instruments to build have to be purified. Uh, and the only way you can do that is you have to begin with a sacrifice and a, of a 100% red colored heifer. No hair, no hoof, all has to be red. So when Christians hear the third temple, they automatic, automatically they go to their eschatology notes from their church. This means the, uh, the study of last things. That's what eschatology means. The study of last things, not end time. Now, the myth that the church propagates is there's a last day coming where the wicked or everyone will be destroyed. Relax. It's just the end of cycles. Like, you have spring, summer, winter, fall. 
Those are cycles, the birth cycle, um, night and day cycle. That's what they're talking about, eschatology. It doesn't mean the termination of something to be extinct. Remember, the church run by the Jesuits, which is the secret society, they just want one thing. They want to keep you in fear. They want to keep you afraid, off balance, not knowing uh, the true the truth that's being done. They It's their version of the Red Scare. Can you see the connections? Bolshevik, Khazarian, Communist, Zionist, NWO, and their false messiah. Okay, back to word, word magic and the X. We know that the X makes the he sound in the Greek, right? Um, the X, if you write it out in the Greek language, it makes the H sound. My name, Paralambos, is spelled with an X. Uh, the word Mexico is pronounced in Mexico, they pronounce it Mexico. And how about the, the name Javier? Some people pronounce, try to pronounce it Xavier. You go to the college, they say Xavier. It's Javier. It's all magic. They want to change it so you can't see it. You also see Christians sporting the stickers on their car. He is greater than I. The, the H is capitalized because he is the God. Greater than I. You, I, is diminutive. They use a lowercase. But what they really mean is maybe X is greater than I. Hmm. Maybe we can spell heifer with the X. Heifer. It's a red heifer. Of the 170 words that end in IX in the dictionary, most of them end in TRIX, which is a trick. Tricks. <laughs> and this indicates a female, okay? Like dominatrix. Uh, start with a T and end in an X. Tricks. As in the magic matrix, could there be a connection, connection to trans? formation to X out one, either the male or the female, or their body parts X them out. Remember, if you're a feminist, you want a woman to have rights. You're not trying to make a woman more of a man just to make them equal. You want to have them be equally important. You don't want to make them look the same. So what are we looking at? We're looking at the differentiation between a cube and, an, and a cross, or X or a T, whatever you want to make it. A cross and a cube are the same. A T is an X, as we saw in the last video. And they hide cube in, in a cross, and they... And the cross is really just a cube. So who uses the cube? <clears throat> in the Muslim faith, they walk around a cube uh, in, their, in their faith. They march around it. And uh, the, the rabbis glue a cube to their head. And of course, the Christians are given the unwrapped version in their cross. So all in one tax. And this is where I kind of show you, you're being taxed, well, you, you get taxed uh, on your income, but this is a taxing of your spirit, of your essence. And in reality, what you have to be careful of is do not fall for this trap. And when I say tax, you have all three letters right in this map right here. You have the T right here. One, two, the T. You have the A, just like has it looked in anarchy, right? A. And of course, you have the X. Tack. Don't be taxed. And guys, that is the end of the presentation. I want you guys to know that the, the key. The most important thing is that you have to just be well aware of where you are and what's going on in this world. I'm going to say signing off.
All right, just one more thing. I just wanted to remind you guys, you know, this is a fairly new channel again, uh, starting from scratch after Devil's Playground 3. Uh, I mean, Devil's Playground 2 uh, was kind of scrapped because we have no access to it anymore. But all of the videos that we did together, Nigel and I, are on this channel. Just uh, go to the playlist and you can find all of them. And I find uh, it probably the most uh, important way of going through them is to start from the beginning. Um, and then the one thing I'll do ask, I do ask is uh, share, like, share, subscribe to the channel uh, and share it really, because otherwise really no one's gonna see these videos except the, the people who are subbed. And we want to get the the message out so that people can realize that, you know, we're being deceived. You know, we're being tricked. We're being bamboozled. We're being um, shown what they want us to see. And we're being focused on uh, looking at the deceptive side. Again, I'm not doing this for money, recognition, nothing. I just want people to know that, you know, looking at truth if you're if you're going to be um, pushed into one direction, you're only going to see the direction you're looking at. You have to be open minded and be willing to question what exactly you're being shown or taught. I'm not here to tell you that I've got 100 percent all the answers. No way. There's a lot of people who are far more you know, turned on, smarter, aware. It's just about gathering your level of knowledge and having the open-mindedness to look at alternatives. You know, we're being lied to. We're being played. We're, th this game we're in, you know, I hear so many people saying, oh, I'm so afraid. I'm scared. Uh, you know, this is the vibration they want. They want you to be stuck, trapped, and eventually... Uh, succumb to the fear that uh, will get you trapped and st to stay here. You know, this everlasting life that the Bible talks about is age, um, is nothing more than a reincarnating yourself back into this world so that you can be the battery for their well-oiled machine and they're going to make it so that they have the advantage you have the disadvantage and you're going to constantly be succumbing to their desires it's time for you to have your uh, free will uh, and enact that and the only time you can in this game is at the very start because otherwise you're gonna say yeah i'll take that script and then it's already written out for you, and you can ha you have to play it. Good guys play it, the bad guys play it. And you know, we look at people like our, our current administration leader. You know, we want to say he's a bad guy, but he's just playing a script. And um, you know, we chose our script, and we have really no choice but to just accept it. So you can make that difference at the end of this life and the beginning of the next. That's where you make the choice. So be aware, make that choice. Uh, again, try to uh, help spread this channel so we can grow it. And again, look at the playlists. Uh, I got a lot of good content in there. And you'll see how we've kind of evolved through the time. You know, Nigel and I, we did the back and forth. We were able to get a lot of good ideas out there. And uh, now I'm just working on continuing uh, to have people just kind of look at alternatives and that's it. Like, share, subscribe. All right, you guys go out there and have an excellent day. And one thing I did want to add, please, I, I really appreciate comments. Comments will help uh, spur on new topics and um, maybe even reveal Details that either I omitted, misstated. Uh, we all learn from this. You know, it's not like I'm here as the, I don't, I'm not a guru by any means. Uh, and I don't want to be 
the smartest guy in the room ever. I want to be learning from the people around me. And if we can all, we, we can all benefit from uh, humility and um, looking for truth. Truth doesn't come from the oldest guy or the youngest person. It comes from the plurality of the people who are involved. So comment, please. I want to reply to those comments and uh, hopefully we can uh, build a, a, a discourse where we all are going to benefit. And I did want to shout out to uh, Jason at Archaics for his excellent information. A lot of the stuff that um, I was going to present, he already presented. So he's got such a massive audience. I'm pretty sure everyone that um, sees his videos, you know, mine is going to be very small com in comparison. But great information that he provided. And uh, just, uh, again, thank you again. And uh, hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.